Michael Lebowitz is the founder of Big Spaceship, a digital creative agency based out of Brooklyn, New York. We recently caught up with him to talk about how he developed his firm and the challenges he's faced along the way. So I wanted to start by kind of going back in time a little bit and going back to your school days. Uh, you were a film student in school. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my question was, how did you make the jump from being a, uh, a film student to working as an interactive or starting an interactive agency? Um, well, making that jump, uh, it, was, it was a pretty protracted process um, because there really wasn't a, an interactive industry when I was in school. Um, I used my first browser, which was Mosaic, when I was a senior in college. Um, so things had quite a ways to go before the commercial internet was really, um, or the commercial web, I should say, was really uh, there. Mm -hmm. um, but I guess film school taught me a lot of the things that were very valuable to learning the, um, the skills uh, that I needed to learn. Not so much tools, but uh, methodologies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, film, very much like uh, interactive work, is highly collaborative. It has a very strong uh, fusion of technology and art. Right. You have to figure out how to work with very, sometimes very large teams, but certainly more than one person. Uh, to accomplish a vision that is often a shared vision, mm -hmm. um, you know, many stakeholders, and I think that was the sort of the biggest um, value that my degree uh, provided me. Um, and then, historically, how I arrived at the agency, I, I left school wondering what I was going to do with my life, mm -hmm. um, bounced around a little bit, and. Uh, found myself living on the West Coast and a bunch of my friends uh, called me up and said, we're making more money than we've ever <laughs> made before. It was the very yes. beginnings of the economic boom uh, and, and the, the first internet bubble. And, um, and I said, that sounds great. I got to learn this stuff. And I, you know, I've been tinkering with Macs since I was six or seven years old. Um, I just never really realized that the creativity that I wanted to uh, that I wanted to have as part of my life and the nerdy computer <laughs> stuff um, could actually coincide until that sort of moment in time. Um, and I swallowed my pride and I moved back in with my mother for six months to take an unpaid internship at a very early uh, web agency. Um, and and that, was, that was at? That was a place called Stump World Systems. Okay. Um, not. Uh, Probably not one for the history books, but a lovely group of people, and uh, I learned a lot. And it was a great time um, just to feel free of economic pressure and yeah. uh, and such to just learn again. And um, that really translated directly into my first job in the industry, which was uh, which was at a an agency, a bubble era agency called Thought Bubble, appropriately named. Right. Um, and then after spending about three years there, I. Uh, in, a, in a tremendous act of hubris and naivete, I said, I can do this, and I went off and started Big Spaceship. So uh, Big Spaceship is really only my second job in the industry. Okay. From what I understand, uh, your agency, there's a sort of a, a creative culture there. There's a sort of, uh, some of the things that I read, that you guys seem like you're uh, foosball aficionados. <laughs> uh, there's yeah. some type of uh, space, big spaceship Olympics. What's could you describe some of the, the environment where where you're at and how that kind of fuels your work? What's the relationship? Sure. Well, I mean, the idea is, you know, that the culture of a place is what is most important. Mm -hmm. um, that if you have a really strong culture that people feel comfortable in. Um, safe in, because creativity is often taking risks and putting yourself out there, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and is not sort of uh, mentally or emotionally confining, mm -hmm. uh, that you can produce better work. And that's borne out for us for you know, nine years now. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, foosball and ping pong and, and video games and things like that, dogs in the office, right. you know, some of it sounds a little 
trite, I guess. Um, some people, you know, think, oh, that's that's what the web guys do. And, yeah. But it's so new economy. Right. Right. Exactly. It's so bubbly era, you know, '90s. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure that any of it, you know, contributes directly to our bottom line in, in any way that we could measure, but we do uh, we do see it bearing out in the work in some way or another. Right. You need to be able to take your head away from a computer as much as possible to mm -hmm. be able to produce really good digital work, which seems counterintuitive, but it's a, it's a pretty strong principle of ours. You know, get away from the computer in order to create something that will eventually be on it. Right. Um, and you know, some of those things have, have led to uh, some of the best work we've produced in, in a much more tangible way. I, I, for a long time, I, I refused to get a ping pong table. <laughs> um, Draw the line there. Yeah, it was, I just thought it was gonna be too noisy, and uh, you know, we had a special, we used our kitchen for the foosball table, it was mm -hmm. pretty soundproof. Um, and uh, somebody decided that they wanted to lobby for it again, somebody who had come in more recently, and I said, okay, you know, I'll sit down, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to what you have to say, because that's what I do. And, and they said, you know, here's why we think it would be great. And I said, okay, here are the you know, five or six points that mm -hmm. I have for why it's not going to work. <laughs> and, you know, if you can convince me, if you can put some sort of proposal together, then I'll do it. Fully expecting that to be the very last word on it. And what came back, not a few weeks later when I had forgotten about it, was one of the best acts of creativity and pieces of work, purely internal, that Big Spaceship has ever produced, which was an application, a job application from a ping pong ball, um, including a resume of all the Olympic events that, uh, that he had taken part in, um, and, and very addressing very acutely all of the concerns that I had, mm -hmm. but in the spirit of this character and and in and very much in the spirit of big spaceship that we, we wouldn't just sort of go off and address the uh, the concerns in a bullet point kind of a way they went off and did it the big spaceship way and we actually published that that proposal as a pdf to one of our blogs and i still think of it as one of the best pieces of work we've done wow you know the, the academy awards were the other night and because you have done so many, so much work for the movie industry, was there is there any any of the movies that you saw that were the one of the awards that, that gets your award for sort of best interactive kind of campaign? Um, that's interesting. A lot of the movies that won are very small, and so mm -hmm. their <coughs> interactive campaigns were also sort of uh, were also sort of small in scale. But that said, there was actually a piece of a campaign for Slumdog Millionaire that I really liked, which was. Um, it was basically a Twitter um, feed of posts specifically, tweets specifically related to Slumdog Millionaire. So it was, an, it was encouraging people to write their own 140 character reviews of it, right. but it was also grabbing what anybody said, and it was just sort of going through. And what was great about it is that people in general, trust what other people have to say more than yeah. what a marketer has to say. Um, that's <laughs> say the, it ain't so. <laughs> yeah, that's the power of word of mouth, and that's mm -hmm. the power of social media. And um, it was this very effective way of showing how much conversation was going on around it. Uh, so you get a volume, and and the the lion's share of it was very positive because it's an excellent film. Yeah. Um, so I thought it was sort of if you involve yourself in it uh, very thoroughly to the point where you want to write a review, that's great and that's a win for the for the film. But even just looking at it, just a snapshot and seeing all of that volume, um, I think has a has a powerful effect on, on perception. And uh, you know, so that was a very sort of inexpensive, um, or I should say, uh, resource, uh, highly efficient use of resources yeah. um, to accomplish a whole lot for a small film. And, uh, really, really admired. That's great. Great, thanks for speaking to me a lot.